Feel the waves cut through me Hypnotized by the sounds I'm breathing in Welcome to The Kyra Station where chiropractors share their stories and lessons learnt in practice. The intention of The Kyra Station is to provide resources and a community that will help chiropractors realise their innate potential. So join The Kyra Station today. Let's get 2017 started in style with Dr. Steve Bowers. I've been trying to get this man on the podcast for the past six months to hear his story and how he was able to grow a super successful practice straight out of college. In this conversation, we discuss his wins and learning experiences from the past year, and how he was able to continue to develop and improve himself, which has greatly increased the success of his practice. I know you're going to love this one. Steve drops a bunch of gems on how to maximize your marketing and conversion to grow your practice around patient-centered care. So without further ado, enjoy this conversation. Welcome to the first episode of the conversation for the year. I have Dr. Steve Bowers on the line all the way from Upper Hutt, Wellington, talking about his experiences over the last year and the independence and growth that he's been through. So welcome, Steve. Morning. Morning. So first thing I'd like to get into today is what got you into chiropractic in the first place? Um, so I started off basically, well, not really knowing what I wanted to do through high school. And then um, just through looking through uni practices, always wanted to do healthcare, I guess, and, and science and that sort of thing interests me. But sort of always thought I'd go down the uh, medicine route. Um but yeah, I actually just found chiropractic in the AUT Uni Prospectus and turns out they had the open day the next night. Um, so went in and listened into the open day and uh, Dr. Brian Kelly was the president then and he was speaking. Um, and so, yeah, something just, just clicked and it all just sort of made sense and I was like, this is it. And yeah, kind of went from there that's awesome it kind of sounds like me so so chiropractic found you you didn't really find it right yeah pretty much i mean i can't say i looked that hard into it before i went to the to the open day but just yeah. everything that he was saying just sort of really resonated with me um and and what i guess i wanted to achieve through healthcare. nice, um, nice. and with that we just sort of just ran with it yeah. and i guess fell in love with it as you know, the years went by and you learned more and more about it. Definitely. I so resonate with that because that was pretty much exactly the same with me. I got to the end of my first degree and thought, I don't know what to, I don't know what I wanted to do. And then kind of found a chiropractic. I had never seen a chiropractic before, never really thought about it. And all of a sudden was like, well, this is my calling now. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. So it was definitely a bit of a 180. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. but it was cool. And obviously love it now. So. Yeah, absolutely. Do you feel like your little brother was a bit, kind of inspiring and wanting to get into healthcare and that kind of stuff? I mean, definitely just healthcare. Um, obviously, growing up with a brother with Down syndrome, I was always looking after him and always going to, you know, his groups and organized events with other kids with special needs. Um, yeah. And I guess that sort of holds a special place, um, well, in my heart and, and to me, you know, looking after them and, and doing that sort of stuff. So that's probably where the – the healthcare idea and the looking after other people sort of stem from. Definitely. Um, and then, yeah, chiropractic just sort of came out. Yeah. And we just, just fitted that model. I mean, for me, chiropractic just makes way more sense because it really deals with someone's functionality rather than the symptoms all the time. Yeah. And I mean, growing up, I was, you know, at the GP every time I was sick and, and doing all that sort of stuff. Um, but there was no, I don't know. I did. I wasn't even really exposed to the, um, you know, fix the underlying cause versus cover up the symptoms model of healthcare at all. It really just sort of, I mean, I only really understood that sort of side of things after I'd gone to the open day and done a little bit more digging into what chiropractic really was. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. A trendsetter. <laughs> I like it. I love it. 
So I'd, I'd really love to hear about what your experiences have been like over the past year. Um, you know, obviously moving down to Wellington because you're Auckland born and raised, moving yep. to a different city, starting up a practice, uh, first year out. Let's like, please share some highlights, some favorite moments, maybe some patient stories would be really cool. And then a couple of lowlights, some, some things, some lessons learned, some struggles that you maybe experienced over the last year. Yeah, I guess it's quite interesting now being exactly a year out. Um, looking back and and I guess like I found chiropractic, this sort of associateship just popped up, literally found it at the um, Lyceum open day thing that they, they put on with all the chiropractors. Um, got in touch with Dave Kelly, who runs the practice down here, um, and decided I was going to ship my life off to Wellington. And so I guess for me, what I really wanted to, to look for uh, as an associate was that mentoring and that guidance because I didn't really think I had the tools to sort of go out there and do it by myself. Um, and then coming down here, you know, the way that the practices run, we don't really have that sort of direct guidance. There was no sort of weekly meeting where we'd learn to do this and we'd go over this sort of case. It was just sort of, I don't know, every couple of weeks we'd have a catch up and um, they would ask if I'd had any challenges throughout the, the week with patients or anything else like that. But there was no sort of guided uh, mentoring. And so I guess that sort of helped me grow a lot. And I did a lot of growing in the sort of first three months because I was actually seeing quite a few new patients. Um, and I guess that was a highlight for me was sort of actually finding out that I could do it and you do have the tools to do it um, straight out of college. You don't sort of need that, you know, one-on-one -on -one supervised mentoring to really, um, well, be successful in practice and really, you know, grow a practice. Um, so that was probably one of the biggest highlights. If I look back in over the year, that was probably one of the biggest highlights for me was really just growing um, as a practitioner. And, you know, that was definitely one of my goals going into the first sort of couple of years of practice was not necessarily seeing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of patients. It was really just sort of setting that really good foundation and that base to become a really successful chiropractor. Um, and it just so sort of turned out that the way the practice is set up and the way that, that we marketed and everything like that, um, we had the volume coming in. And so now it's sort of, you know, cranking along and, and we've got a, a really good sort of new patient um, income rate and things like that. So that was uh, really good. That is awesome um, and, and definitely something I'd, I'd love to talk about later because I think that's so important in terms of, building a practice and especially when you're when you're out there in the environment and you're just starting up actually having a really decent new patient lifeblood coming into the practice to grow your own skills and abilities and obviously the practice numbers is really important so i'd yep. love to delve into that as well but maybe later in the conversation yep so a couple of low lights um from the year i just sort of have a think about it would be um it's tough to say. I don't think I've had, you know, a, a specific low light. I mean, there's been certain cases where, you know, I probably should have handled that differently. And there's been lots of learning experiences where I go, oh, I definitely should have x-rayed um, before I'd adjusted them and I should have done this, that or the other. Um, overall, I mean, it's been a really positive experience. But, you know, for me, the low lights have definitely been the the case by case um, you know, you're always going to get those people who, who come in who just don't really get uh, what they want out of chiropractic and they don't really understand what you are trying to um, have them experience through chiropractic as well. Um, and I guess, well, as the year goes on, for me, those cases have got less and less as I've developed my skills in diagnosis and, you know, actually figuring out what's going on with them because I mean yes obviously we deal with the underlying function and we're just allowing someone's body to heal properly 
But if you have a person come in uh, who's got a specific pain, which a lot of your new patients will, I don't think you're ever going to turn them into a lifelong chiropractic patient unless they see some positive benefits for what they want out of their short-term sort of goals for chiropractic. Absolutely. I, I, let's jump into that because that's such a good conversation. Because what do you think is like the primary concern of a new patient coming into your office? Oh, 100%. Can you get rid of my pain or my stiffness or my headache 100%. or whatever it is? Yeah, 100%. Um, and for me, at the start, I guess this was another learning experience was, I, you know, we've been through the course at chiropractic college. We've, you know, learned that it's all about function versus symptoms. Um, and it, it, it's all about, you know, allow, just allowing a person's body to function as best as it can. Um, but so I, I guess I tried to fight it a little bit and I tried to, you know, ignore, not ignore, but, you know, push people's pain to the side and was sort of just like, yeah, that'll get better on its own if we get your body functioning properly. Hmm. But I think one of the things that I developed the most would be, you know, diagnosis on, um, whether the pain's coming from a disc or a facet or an SI or a, you know, this, that or the other. Um, and then tailoring chiropractic around obviously to getting the spine functioning properly, but so that those people's, um, issues and chief complaints, you know, improve because they're never going to see any of the other improvement um, improvements that we go on about and love to see, you know, increase energy, sleeping, all that sort of stuff, just allowing the body to, to heal and function better. They're never going to experience that and they're never going to get what chiropractic really is unless they sort of stick in for the long term. Exactly. Uh, and I don't think there'll be some people who understand it and they go, yep. Um, even though my pain hasn't completely gone, I completely understand that getting the underlying function of my spine working properly is going to allow my body to heal. And, you know, I should definitely come here and, and do this regularly for the rest of my life. But a high percent of people are just definitely not going to come back in for that long-term care if their initial symptoms don't improve. Of course. And I mean, for me, that's one of the biggest hurdles, but surely like, cause looking back and looking at what I've had to develop over the last year as well, I, I think the biggest thing for me was firstly acknowledgement of what's going on with them and not trying to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you feel symptoms, but that's not the issue because for yeah, the patient, that, that is the core of the issue. That's why they're there. That's why they're going to you know, pay you money, right? That's, that's why they're in the office. They want help from you. So you have to be able to acknowledge that. But yes. a really big yeah. thing for me was uh, managing their fear because they yeah. were afraid I'm in pain right now. Most of the time, is this person going to make it worse? Do they know exactly what's going on? They're a chiropractor, so they're a little bit weird and out of the ordinary. Do I trust them? Yeah. And the biggest thing for me in that new patient and obviously the, the report of findings of the next couple of visits was was managing that, making sure the person felt heard, that they were in the right place, and that we could certainly help, even if their pain wasn't necessarily going to be, quote unquote, fixed within the first couple of visits. Absolutely. Um, and that's where your communication comes in, which... I mean, if I look at my, you know, report of findings and, and what I say in my new patient compared to what I said a year ago, I mean, it's sort of half the time it changes every time, but yeah, as it should, the, the yeah. gist of it sort of, you know, the, I guess the core sort of message, um, that you want to communicate and get across sort of stays the same, but that actual sort of key message, um, has probably changed quite a lot in the last year. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, like you said, it's sort of gone from that sort of not really acknowledging people's symptoms and, and just sort of brushing over it and going, but this is really what chiropractic's about. Yeah. To sort of integrating that, you know, while sort of turning them on to the thinking of, you know, healing comes from the inside out and we get the underlying function um, moving and, and working properly. And, and then, yes, health and relief of symptoms will come after that that's awesome man. well that's not really much of a low light that's awesome <laughs> it must have been a really good year in practice well done it's very exciting um, yeah so i mean it was i think there's just been a lot of learning and developing yeah. and, and 
the low lights which I did have, which were like I said, were more case by case. Yeah. Uh, were you know I guess torn turned into a uh, a learning experience and something that I you know it was absolutely from a few of those cases that I changed the way that I communicated what I said about you know this issue or changed the way that I um, you know would say yes I need to X-ray this person right now or it changed the way that I actually adjusted um, and sort of once all those things changed, you know, I guess that turns into a highlight again because you've just learned something from that experience. Absolutely. Which, I mean, I mean, just kudos to you because that's just the best way to look at it because it's just, it's a learning experience. It's all, it's all feedback, right? It's not yeah. necessarily negative. It's just feedback. This is just what's going on and this is how I can grow and this is how I can learn. And at the end of the day, it's all about becoming a better chiropractor and, and looking after your patients better. And if you can grow from that experience rather than holding on to it, I think it's so much better. Or at least that's definitely what I try and do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and sort of getting out of that fear-based model of practice where you're at school, you're like, oh, I have to get these 500 visits. Yeah. Please come see me as many times as possible. Yeah. You know, if you lose a new patient here or there, which is going to happen, mm-hmm. um, you know, people just aren't going to get it and they're not going to come back in. It's because it doesn't align with their values and, and they don't see the benefit in it, say, past the symptoms or even, you know, after the first visit. Um, not going, oh, you have to come in, please, you know, it's sort of, you know, that one happened, let it go, move on to the next one, and it's not a huge deal, you know. Definitely. Um, you're not going to fail a paper if you don't get that person in for the first three visits. Exactly. Um, and, and, and for you, when, when someone says no or, or – or they're just not ready yet. Because how do you feel about that? Because usually for me, it's it's never really a no. It's just a now is not the right time. Yeah, and and of course, you know, a party is like, oh, but I really want you want you to experience this amazing thing called chiropractic. Of course, yeah, yeah. But you know, the other part is just sort of like, look, I completely understand whether it's financial, whether it's you know this whatever reason it is that they give you. Yeah. Um. I guess I've learned to sort of accept that and, near, you know, not sort of – you just sort of take it on the chin and, and keep going and it doesn't really, you know, affect you too much. Whereas at the start, you know, you sort of go, oh, that was one of my new patients. That, that could have been an amazing patient. I could have helped that person so much and now they're not coming in and you really sort of wear your heart on your sleeve about it. Mm. But now it's sort of, you know, I've seen enough people to just sort of accept it and move on. Um, and when they're ready, when something happens, when, you know, when whatever, uh, it is that happens in their life, um, happens, they will come back in because they've come in and you've explained to them what chiropractic is. And so they now sort of see a time and place in their life when it's useful for them. Absolutely. And in terms of, in terms of doing your report and, and you know going through the, those first couple of visits and, and helping the patient understand what it is that you do as a chiropractor and what chiropractic actually is, what kind of options do you tend to give them in terms of care plans and, and, and looking ahead? So obviously for me, each care plan is different, but when someone comes in, obviously, like we were talking about before, I want to help them improve the underlying function of their spine, but also improve their chief complaint. Um, You know, obviously you look back and and at school, you'd sort of kick yourself for saying that, but, you know, I really do want to help people experience better health and reduce their symptoms. Um, And so in, in terms of explaining it in terms of care plan, I usually sort of, you know, set out a care plan tailored to them um, and I'll explain it, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get your spine functioning properly so that there's no interference to your nervous system so that your body is healing and we can sort out some of these issues that are going on. Um, And then through that, you know, I usually explain it as at the start that your body is sort of in crisis at the moment where it's obviously not functioning very well. And so, you know, you're experiencing symptoms from that. Um, 
And so our initial goal of care is to improve that. And then I sort of say that's going to take X amount of weeks with X amount of visits per, per week. Um, and then we, we do a progress exam and see how your body is actually functioning now. Um, we'll redo all the tests and redo all the you know um, stuff that we did in the initial visit and see how you're going symptomatically, but more importantly, how your body is going functionally. And then come up with a, you know, do we drop the visits down because you're holding the adjustments really well or do we keep going with that care, with that uh, um, initial care plan for a few more weeks because the body's just not quite where we want it to be. Nice. Um, and I think that really sort of makes sense to people in terms of, Initially, we want to get the function of the spine, you know, working properly. And then after that, we really want to maintain it. And we just really want to make sure that, you know, once we've got your body out of crisis, you are functioning at, you know, 100% and your body is working and moving as it should. Um, and people understand that if you put stress on your body throughout your lifetime and, you know, throughout the week at work, you're, you know, doing whatever you're doing, you're going to need a, a regular sort of maintenance or, or, or service for the body just to give it a bit of a tune up and make sure it's all functioning properly. Um, and, and that's sort of where, you know, you go, look, we're going to reduce the, the amount of, uh, you know, the, the rate of, of the visits that you're doing at the moment until we get you out to, wherever you know you can be out to where you're holding your adjustments until so whether that's a couple of weeks whether that's a month whether it's longer for for some people um that's how we sort of determine the care plans it's really on how the body's actually functioning nice uh, which i think is a really good way to do it because then then you're actually catering the care plan for an individual rather than trying to put them into boxes absolutely but yeah so i don't yeah i i don't have someone come in who has a lumbar disc herniation and I go, sweet, three times a week for the first four weeks and then we're going to do twice a week for the next three weeks and then we're going to do once a week for the next month and then we're going to go out. It just sort of, you know, depends on how that person's body responds to care um, and that basically determines whether or not they need to stay on the three times a week for a little bit longer or whether or not we can drop down that frequency of care. Nice. Um, and cool. obviously, you know, I don't determine the care plans on their symptoms, but going through, absolutely, you acknowledge their symptoms. And, you know, obviously, as we know, most of the time, people's symptoms, what do you know, seem to improve. Um, it's crazy, right? You get their nerve system working better and their body doesn't express symptoms anymore. Exactly. Who would have thought? <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, all the way through, you, you absolutely have to acknowledge um, that they're, you know, where their symptoms are at. Um, and I guess just all the way through, you sort of say why their symptoms are improving and just keep sort of hammering in that message of the underlying function of the spine and the nervous system to them. Definitely. And I mean, I'm, I'm kind of curious just to delve into that a little bit more in terms of the recommendations of care plans, because I, I definitely have like 90% of the time, I either have two types of people. So I have my relief care people who are like the short term ACC, I've just got this back pain, I want it better type people, yep. um, or I've got the other people who are, I've had this issue for a while, I really want to get on top of it, I'm sick of being tired and unhealthy, what's, how am I going to get this better doc kind of people. So that might what I would call my corrective care patients or wellness, if you will, or whatever. Um, and they'll kind of fit into two camps. So my reliefy people are usually three times a week for say around about four weeks, maybe maybe three to four weeks, depending on how, how they're doing. Um, and then my corrective people are usually longer than that. So they'll go through two healing cycles usually. So that's either or, or three. So that's either three times a week for eight to twelve weeks type thing. And then, then like you, I'll do progress exams, obviously measuring how they're improving and when they're ready to graduate from, from a functional perspective, not a symptomatic perspective, then that's when they can graduate to either weekly. Usually they'll head to weekly after that. Um, yeah. And then as that continues further down the track, 
then it's you know fortnightly or monthly or or longer depending on the person. So I would I would definitely say that that's kind of where I've learnt to make recommendations in terms of actually getting really good results for people over time compared to college, which was flat rate everybody two by six yeah. <laughs> done. <laughs> and, and even with, you know, obviously we, we do a, a fair amount of ACC at our practice. Um, and even with, like I said, those sort of relief people um, yeah. from day one, yes, you you say, you know, we need to see you this amount for whatever's going on. Um, but from day one, I'm sort of hammering in that, you know, once we get you out of uh, the symptomatic phase, you know, we still need to improve and then maintain the underlying function of your spine. And so I've found that actually a fair amount of my ACC patients that who just come in to get rid of their symptoms um, are converted over to that wellness sort of nice. system. I mean, that, that just shows good communication. That's excellent because yeah i I've, i find acc patients particularly hard to convert into longer strategies because they really care about the pain and it being absolutely. cheaper absolutely so and it makes it more difficult yeah i mean even though you don't want to communicate in that sort of symptomatic level you can with the acc patients i've still found that you know yes they understand that if something, if, if there's a joint that's jammed up and stuck and it's interfering with the nervous system, that's going to stop their body from functioning properly and that's going to be affecting the way that they feel, you know. Definitely. So even if you change your communication to being uh, still about the way that they feel, but, you know, they understand that it's it's that underlying issue that's causing, you know, that's contributing to their symptoms, um, you can still communicate in a way that they they understand that you know if they want to keep their underlying function of the spine working properly that's going to you know most of the time unless they have unless they have another freak accident uh stop those you know chronic symptoms from sort of coming into the body and it's going to mean that they're going to feel a whole lot better um and so even that, so that's, you know, not usually a way that we like to communicate, you know, but with those people, they under, if you can still hammer through that underlying function message, um, linking it to the way that they feel, they sort of, you know, they can understand that, I guess. Definitely. And that's that fine balance between what's ideal and what's real. And ideally, people would come in and I'd get it. They'd get the chiropractic story. They'd get why they're there. They'd go, yep, doc, totally understand. Sign me up. I'm ready to have that quality of life that I've always dreamed of but never known how to achieve. Yeah. And the difference is, is what's real. And what's real is the current paradigm of health, which is making people sicker year upon year, not healthier, because it's based around symptom management, and, and that's all that people understand. So when they approach you as a healthcare provider, they assume that you're the same as everyone else. Yes. And absolutely. it takes time to actually build rapport with a person, help them understand that, yes, I'm different. I'm here to look after you from a more holistic perspective. And some people just won't get it. They're not ready. But, man, when they do, it's it feels so good, right? Absolutely. And, yeah, I guess if I, you know, we, I, at the end of the year, I sort of sat down and, and had a good look at um, – my numbers and, and how nice. many people sort of continued from the ACC care and, and and as the year went on and as my communication changed and improved, that number increased, absolutely. Yeah. Which is brilliant. I mean, that's a really, really good step to look at and something I definitely me measured um, and looked at. And you can see my conversion rate at the beginning of the year was abysmal. Yeah. <laughs> it was just terrible. But then, yeah, as you kind of grow and learn and develop and, and, and look at yourself and figure out ways to improve and get feedback, you do. You get better, which is the whole point, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's cool. So I'd love to jump back in and talk a little bit more about your win, which is obviously, you know, being able to be – independent and growing by yourself and being able to back yourself to to learn and grow without having that constant mentorship or that that constant primary doc over your shoulder looking at what you're doing um, so i'd like to talk about that a little bit more and also how you've managed to really pump your patient full of 
pump your patient numbers up with new patients and marketing and how you've managed to work that, which I think is really, really important for chiropractors to get. Um, okay, so I guess if we start with, with the new patients and how we actually get the new patients, I guess understanding where your practice is, um, and this obviously didn't, this was something that I learned as like, I went down there from Dave. This is probably the area that I got the most mentoring and, and we worked the most on. Cool. Was um, you know okay? So we're in we're in Upper Hutt. It's, I mean, I guess it, it's close to Wellington, but it's still pretty small town feel. Um, we're right on the main street, and the practice has been there for years and years and years. And actually, the practice had a really really good reputation before we were there. There was a guy called uh, Walter Williams who was a Palmer grad who'd had it for he started it and he'd had it for thirty five years or something. Um, and you know, everyone in Upper Hutt sort of knows, oh yeah, there's a chiropractor at the, at the end of Main Street, um, which is, I guess, so important. And, and that's not something that you're going to be able to build and develop straight away. But, you know, if you're looking at, uh, I guess buying a practice or starting an associateship in a practice, um, knowing that a practice has a really good reputation and, there's not a, a poor reputation of it in because we have really there's one other chiropractor in Upper Hutt, but he sort of doesn't actively market or screen or do anything. He's got his regulars who come in and he just sort of leaves it at that. Um, so that was the first thing. And so we do get a lot of internet and, and walk by referrals. Nice. Um, it really helps. But I guess the biggest sort of new patient um generator that we found was was a couple of things and it was more i guess this wouldn't really work in your sort of you know auckland city where there's not really anything like this um they put on uh, a couple of fairs each year one called march madness where they close down the main street and there's just you know all sorts of shops and vendors and, and food and everything and just doing screenings at that where it's literally an event right outside your front door um generated a lot of new patients and then the other one which was probably the most surprising one for me was um the local newspaper which is the Hutt leader we uh dave had done this once before but we basically put in an, an advertorial which is um obviously an advert for the practice but we actually wrote a little well dave wrote a little story um to go along with it and it was called um oh, what's the title why thousands came to see the man with crippled hands. And so he just wrote a little story about Clarence Gonstead and, and his successes over in the States with chiropractic and that sort of stuff. Nice, and, nice. Then, and then linked it into chiropractic down in Upper Hutt and talked a little bit about, you know, what we do as chiropractors. Um, and I think we actually put a, a little deal on the new patient price that was slightly cheaper just as a sort of, incentive of people to take that first step and to come into the practice Perfect. and yeah I mean each I think we did two of those last year and each one brought in 30 plus new patients oh, it's so which good. Is massive and, it's and, so good and it's so nice because you don't have to go out and stand there for an entire day and and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with screening you know we do a lot of screenings as well but being able to just put a, an ad in the paper and that is something that would only work in Upper Hutt or only work in other little towns. So really just getting back to understanding where your practice is, where you're going to get the biggest market from and, and how to communicate with those people the best. Mm. Um, and so for us, it was, yeah, at the local events and it was in the newspapers. And then the last one was, quite a cool thing that we do in Wellington because there's sort of, uh, you know, Wellington City, um, there's Lower Hutt, Upper Hutt, Porirua, sort of a few different places and it just so happens that in most places there's sort of only one or two chiropractors um, and, and they're far enough away that it's going to be too far to, for someone to really travel from Porirua to Upper Hutt to come and see you, you know, they're not really going to do that. And so we get together with a few other uh, chiropractic practices and actually, you know, we go to the 
like the the Go Green Expos and the uh, what do we do? Women's Lifestyle, um, a couple of other ones like that, which are actually in the city, but a lot of people from the Hutt Valley come to. And so there's sort of you know two or three chiropractors on. So we're not competing against each other. We actually set up a really good referral network. Nice. You know? um, because there's sort of one chiropractor for the city, one chiropractor for Porygrua, and, you know, we're in Upper Hutt. Uh, and, and so that actually works really well. You know, when someone approaches you at the screening straight away, you just look at where they're from. You go, sweet, this person's in the city most of the time. Go and see, go and have a chat to these people now. Um, and they'll do the same if they're from the Hutt Valley. You know, they send them our way. Um, that's a really good way to do it. That's it awesome. Yeah, it's, it's really, really nice sort of not competing with the other chiropractors, but actually working with them and developing a good relationship with them, um, which is something that I guess you couldn't really do unless you are not in direct competition for your, I guess, walk-in new patients and, and mm. you know, where patients could choose, oh, yeah, I could go here or I could go there mm. um, because the practices just aren't close enough, which is – so that's very cool. Yeah. That, that's really cool. And that's really cool that you're creating that culture, obviously, in Wellington, that ability to actually work with other chiropractors. Because I tell you what, there's, there's not enough of us. There really isn't. No. There's way no. more people than there are chiropractors. So sharing, don't don't be fighting over one person. Just share them. There's way more people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I guess, again, that's just sort of the layout of Wellington and, and where mm. the practice are allows us to do that. And again, in Auckland, probably – wouldn't be, um, you know, a lot of people's first choice on ways to screen and market. Sure. But it doesn't mean it's not possible. No, I definitely mean, not. Um, in the ideal world. Definitely not. <laughs> Dreams but are free. Guess, yeah. There, there's no sense of direct competition down here, which is really nice. Um, That's really good. Even, yeah, even now that we've got another associate in the practice, even between us, you know, we sort of go out and – if there's an expo, I'll do the Saturday. The other associate will do the Sunday. Um, and so there's, again, not even that direct. There's enough new patients coming into the practice that there's not even that direct competition there. You nice. know, we split the walk-ins and then whoever, all your referrals go to you, obviously. And you sort of get a day at each screening. Yeah. Perfect. Which is such a good way to do it. And really nice little segue into what I want to talk about next and that's kind of the future. So obviously the last year you sat down and reflected over, over what you've been able to achieve, which I think is really, really important. And I definitely did that as well. And what's your kind of goals? What do you want to achieve over the next year in terms of personal growth, uh, in terms of practice growth and in terms of different experiences that you'd like to achieve? Yep. Um, so I guess in terms of, chiropractic practice and, and where I'm going. Um, obviously don't want to be an associate for the rest of my life. Sure. Um, definitely sort of, I, I guess this first year in coming out and knowing that, you know, I, I could do it now. I could absolutely set up my own practice and be very happy and comfortable running everything and, you know, organizing all the sort of behind, behind the scenes things. Um, you know, this year I'm, I want to stay in, in the associateship for probably another year. Um, and in that time, well, I think the ultimate goal that we set at our first marketing meeting was um, hitting the, the 200 number a week regularly. Nice. Um, so that would be cool to achieve by, Hell yeah. by the end of this year. That's amazing. Um, nice. So that would be very cool. And I guess just continue to – develop and grow my well the sort of you know the different aspects of chiropractic that we've talked about the the communication and the adjusting and you know I guess in terms of my adjusting I sort of you know definitely do a little bit of a, a mishmash of everything I don't practice pure gonset or anything like that yeah for me it's all about the exact adjustment that a person needs at that time so like we talked about before with the, the diagnosis of whether it's a facet or a disc or an SI issue, personally, if it's a disc issue and, and the pain, you know, their symptoms are coming from um, dysfunction in that disc, I'll do a Gonstead line of drive. 
if it's a facet issue, I'll do a diversified line of drive. Um, and that, for me, is what I've sort of found has got the best results um, in terms of holding the adjustments and, of course, in terms of patient symptoms. Nice. Um, but that, that's a thing yeah. that comes from experience, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that was just something that sort of developed over, you know, the over the year of, of nice. seeing lots of people and and, and actually doing, doing the work. Actually getting into it and, you know, getting to play around. Well, you yeah. know, when I say play around with it, play around with it and, you know, doing a, a gone state adjustment versus doing a diversified adjustment and seeing how that person reacts and then getting them back in next time and going, oh, it's still, you know, we didn't get the improvement that we wanted uh, in terms of the function of the spine. Let's try it this way. Um, and I guess that development will keep going probably for the rest of my life. It's probably going to, you know, um, there'll be less dramatic change as you sort of refine all that sort of stuff as you go on and on further and further. But, yeah, at the moment, I mean, there's a lot of playing around with how exactly, uh, you know, I like to adjust and how, you know, when I feel like I need to x-ray and things like that. Definitely. Uh, so that's probably that's probably one of the biggest development goals is just refining the actual technique and the actual practice of chiropractic. Uh, what are my other goals for the year? Um, I guess one of the biggest ones is figuring out what I want to do at the end of the year as well. Uh, whether I want to start up my own place from scratch or find another place to go into and look at buying. Yeah. Um, I really have no idea what's happening at the moment, whether I go and buy myself, whether I find someone else who wants to sort of start a place, you know, I mean, that'll just be a time thing and we'll see what, what will happen in the future. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So for the moment, that's sort of, that's sort of it. I mean, just a lot of cool. in the first couple of years, you know, the amount of personal growth that you do and the amount of growth that in terms of your chiropractic practice that you do is um, insane. It's, Absolutely. Well, I really think it's that process of it's trial and error, refining practice, constantly reworking and, and slightly adjusting your technique just to keep getting things better and better. And I mean, part of the thing that attracted me about chiropractic in the first place is that doesn't stop like no. you said that that continues for the rest of your life yes the the changes won't be as dramatic as you keep refining your skills and abilities but you're always going to want to get that adjustment just right or that you know that part of communication just right for people and that's, that's i mean that's for me that's the art of chiropractic that's that's the fun bit yeah exactly and 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 that's what make it makes it fun and it, it really is it's fun um when you, oh, man, it's fun. when you get a good day in practice, how yeah. great do you feel at the end of that shift? Absolutely. And and knowing that you sort of, without anyone's sort of input or guidance, you take it from square one to where they are now, you know, seeing how much people improve and seeing the effect that you have on people's lives is huge. Mm. Um, and I guess that's why we all keep doing it. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, biggest lesson, I mean, hopefully take a message that, I definitely got from having conversations with you in the past is it's just back yourself trust yourself because you've actually got this and yes if you have some struggles or something's difficult go ask for help there's definitely people out there who will help you but you actually know a lot you absolutely um trust and, yeah, I mean that that sort of definitely in my first three months that was probably the thing that surprised me the most was mm. uh, you know when a case came in little bits of information of uh, from whatever class it was sort of popped into my head, this is how you should manage this, this is what you should do. If someone presents with this, you should refer them out straight away or you should, you know, do this. Um, and now having experienced a few sort of very interesting cases like a, a AAA and a pretty serious quarter equina, um, you know, I mean, now I back myself a whole lot more to say, okay, this person has this, this, and this, we need to do this right now uh, mm. without even sort of questioning myself or having to think about it too much. It's just sort of almost 
automatic. Whereas at the start, I feel like you question yourself a lot. Uh, and when you don't have that backing in and there's two people in the waiting room and you have to make that split decision on whether you uh, send them to the GP, you x-ray and then you adjust or you just adjust straight away, it sort of, I mean, it does put you under the pump a little bit. Um, but I was quite surprised in terms of how much I actually recalled and how much I knew about all that sort of stuff. And you really do. I don't, when I came out of the, the chiropractic center, I didn't think I had those tools and those skills. I always thought I had to, you know, talk to the mentor about it and to really sort of get a second opinion on it. But, but you really can, I mean, you get given the skills to do it by yourself. Um, and so that was quite cool discovering that and actually sort of going through that process. That is awesome. And also I think a, a perfect message to end the episode on there. Steve, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your story. It's always good to catch up, always good to chat. I look forward to talking again soon. No, my pleasure. Thank you for all the support you've been showing this platform. If you have any ideas for future episodes or you'd like to be involved, send me a message through the website or your preferred social media. For the resources mentioned in this episode, check out the show notes or thechirostation.com. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend and leave a comment on Facebook. Now go out there and start a conversation today. <laughs>